alegria for me to be here. I'm very glad to be here today with you, sharing the data for Faro Agricola. Faro Agricola is a company that has 4,300 hectares of citrus distributed in nine farms in the state of Sao Paulo. The size of the farms, I would say it's a mid-size. For some, maybe it's, you know, more, for some, you know, some see that as more difficult for fighting greening. But we have had the success cases for most of the farms. Basically, this map of the state of Sao Paulo shows the distribution of farms in the cities where farms are located. Here represented in green. This map shows how the situation is for HLB in Sao Paulo in terms of plants that are affected. And we see that the central area is the most critical one. And as we move uh, to the outskirts, be it northbound or south, then we, the incidence of the disease decreases. Fortunately, Faro farms are not in the worst areas. So although these uh, peripheral regions are very um, complicated in terms of being very close to the high incidence area, in this case it's a farm that is relatively new, so the disease has progressed very much. So as my colleagues have said, the actions that we take there at Faro to manage age HLB start even before our planting. Before we plant, the first question that we always ask is, where are we going to plant? So for us to decide on a new project, we will want to go to regions with lower incidence. Fortunately, we have studies produced by Funda Citrus that allow us, allows uh, citrus growers to choose and um, especially for companies that are, you know, can easily move uh, around, we can then choose the regions where to invest. Uh, another thing that I believe to be important is to try and have areas that are of a size that is reasonable. Small areas, as we heard today here, are more difficult for you to manage the disease in. So we understand that within our investment capacity, so an area of uh, 500 hectares for our investment capacity would be the ideal size, So at least, so that we can have uh, uh, this in fund money invested. Another thing that we try to analyze before we plant the growth, if it's too possible for us to clean up the surroundings in areas where we have a lot of difficulty in terms of, uh, you know, there being country houses or even housing, we have to uh, you know, be more careful because then it's going to be really difficult. Even with all techniques, you know, uh, taught by Funda Citrus, uh, Citrus in terms of convincing people, it's really hard to clean up the surroundings. Also, we have uh, the situation of farms that are uh, around, they need, uh, you know, uh, replanting because they have very old growth. So we have to analyze all of that before we plant or replant. Maybe we should replant the farm as a whole, but in some situations you cannot do that because we have different age uh, uh, growths. So we have to see first the internal health in your farm. You don't want to replant a farm that has a lot of problems, but also we do not want to replant within a very small plot within the farm. So we understand that we need to have at least a 200 hectare plot for us to think of uh, replanting. Once decided that, decide to plant, we're then going to use healthy nursery plants. We're going to have a, a denser planting that is above 600 plants per hectare, that is six per two, 6.5 times, or per 2.5 spacing. That's what we use in our plantings today. Then we have more density uh, uh, along the borders, and we try to have larger plots with the same variety and same rootstock with the goal of our having this more homogeneity at the time of uh, the vegetative flush to better control of psyllid. Basically, those are the internal actions uh, here, uh, uh, they are the same as uh, the ones cited before, that is monitoring of psyllid, uh, yellow 
uh, traps, insecticides, and uh, spraying, and also inspections and eradications. We use the yellow sticky cards, distance from each other like 100 meters. They're always in the upper third of the plant. Weekly readings, we try and audit uh, those traps once a month. We go there, we take the yellow uh, sticky cards to the uh, an inspection by a, a professional so that we uh, do not have uh, mistakes in the reading of psyllids and we replace the cards uh, every 15 days. So here information on how psyllid has behaved in our farrow farms in three crops, very similar to what our colleague Ivaldo mentioned some time ago. We have here a sum of all farms for Faro, 412 uh, traps and three different crops, crop seasons. We see that usually at the end of winter, beginning of spring, this is when the peak of psyllid happens. It may vary a little bit from year to year, but usually this was September, this August, and this September. Last year was a high peak. coinciding with the information provided by Ivaldo in terms of uh, vegetative flush or new shootings. So this time here is a time where when we have to make extra efforts to fight psyllid. Besides that, in new plantings, we have the application of systemic insecticide. We use a tiamectoxin or imidacloprid uh, in grows up to two years of age. In the last uh, crop year, we had three applications, September, November, and January, probably due to the need for moisture in the soil. In terms of spraying terrestrial applications, this is a sum up of what uh, Faro did in the last crop year. Here we have for uh, mature growths, 19 applications performed. That is not saying that all received 19 applications. It's a, a summing up of everything that has been done in different farms, different plots. Plots, some plots were uh, sprayed more times and some plots fewer times. Now, as for young plants, the sum was seven, 27 uh, spray-ins basically every 15 days in the um, late winter, early spring, three applications due to the high population of insects. Also, we have uh, aerial application, not for all farms. We have farms that have no uh, conditions for you to have aerial spray and because of the relief or because of uh, the geography, but wherever possible, we'd carry that out. In the last crop year, we had five applications, aerial applications, also coinciding with late winter, early spring, and then afterwards in fall. Also, we have uh, inspection and er eradication of contaminated plants, but also we have realized that the best results started to come up as of the time when we implemented external actions. Our external actions basically consist of mapping the surrounding area. We have a five kilometer um, surrounding and we monitor psyllid in the surrounding area. We perform spraying and eradication in this uh, surrounding area. I say spraying and eradication because first we wanted to have eradication, but that's not possible in some cases. So then we started to uh, spray instead those areas. Also, we have the eradication of a rank per lime in pastures around. Sometimes we have, um, for some farms, we have livestock next uh, to the citrus area. And when we have pastures, we have a lot of uh, rank per lime, and that may cause negative impact on the population of psyllid. We also have a release of tamarixia in cities and uh, areas next to uh, the farms, and we have uh, joint efforts. So this is a little bit of the situation of HLB in this San Sebastian farm. It's a very uh, iconic case because it was a very 
difficult situation when we just worked with internal action. And then as of the time we implemented external actions, we had large improvement. It was located in the city of Pedregulho, that is north um, eastern area of Sao Paulo, 420 hectares to 130,000 trees, 12 year old. So the work was first mapping. We went out with our team to locate everything that there was of farms around it. There was no commercial citrus groves, but a large amount of farms that were or rather uh, country houses and small farms with uh, uh, myrtle trees and citrus. Then we saw that there were 48 neighbors with whom we talked. And uh, as of the time we started to implement uh, this uh, regional management that was started in 2013, but still ongoing with actions that should be carried out, we are at a time now with the 1,022 plants and the two, uh, 48 neighbors out of them, almost 700 of them are regularly sprayed. We have had for the whole period of action in the neighboring areas, more than a thousand plants eradicated. Also, we supply them with nursery plants to uh, offset the, uh, for the eradication of plants. We also supply orange. We offered 180 uh, orange uh, nursery plants. And also for the neighboring farms, we keep uh, yellow sticky cards so that we can check to see if uh, spraying by our employees is uh, well done. Because with few plants and uh, frequent spraying, the detection of uh, psyllid in the yellow cards will show if the job is carried out in a good, successful way. Also, we have the release of Tamarixia, especially in cities and villages around uh, the farm. We also depend on from the citrus for us to have insects. But our intention, our goal is to have releases every end of winter and start of uh, spring. That's when we understand that they can help us more. You know, the populations of Tamarixus can help us more by reducing the population of a diaphorina. So as a result of work on this farm, we had this um, higher number of internal action, more aggressive ones than those that we are common, that I uh, we are carrying out today. In 2012 and 13, we had more spray-ins every month, and the HLB would still go up. In 2013, we started to implement the management, external management work. And then we needed some time and some adjustment of the work. But as of then, those are the results that we then started to have with a reduction that is very sharp in the incidence of uh, contaminated plants. And we are pleased with uh, those results. Some points that we learned a long time that uh, have to be considered in management have also be, been cited before include, uh, for example, a farm where you have irrigated areas and uh, dry areas, or when the whole farm is irrigated, but you have the management of irrigation in a way that some plots are irrigated first than others, then you have to have in mind that by irrigating part of the farm, this part becomes more attractive to insects. So you have to have more attention given to the area because there will be more migration of insects to those areas. Plus, we have pruning, as uh, Rodrigo um, well put it. It's very important for you to have pruning. Pruned areas will need more treatment because also you're going to have more psyllid. Um, and the replantings need more uh, care, and the borders need more constant spray-in. Time's up, so I'd just like to end by paying a tribute to our Master Beauvais, an inspiration to us. This is a visit to our farm, San Sebastião, in 2015. So thank you very much. <laughs>